Hello legends. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use NAN to do no code website automation. I think this is a very untapped use case for NAN. So if you're an agency, this is an extra service that you can now sell to your clients. Or if you're a business owner, you can save yourself hundreds of dollars instead of hiring a traditional developer, you can actually run these automations by yourself. So let me show you what I'm talking about. On the right hand side of this page, you see a dummy website that I created. It's just an e-commerce store. And on the left side of the screen, you see all the code. This is all the backend code and all the backend files that are running this website. And then the right hand side is just the preview of that code. So we have this website. So the first example of no code website automation will be one that you're already very familiar with. I'm going to go across to the contact page. And now from the contact page, which is a very standard page that every website will have, I've got a box over here that's asking for my name, email address, and then a message. And actually, once I fill out all these details and then I press the send button, this information is actually sent into the back end of the website. And then somewhere in the code, I have to have some logic built in that'll then do something with this information. So typically, if you're a small website, you might actually have this contact form, just create a new ticket in your Gmail inbox, or maybe it goes directly into Slack, which means to actually code up the functionality for this web form, you have to hire a developer that's going to go through your code, find that specific section of the web form, and then create some logic over here that'll take that information and then it'll send it to some other place. Now to contrast that, this is an NAN workflow that does the exact same thing that I just described. You submit the web form, it takes the contact details, and then it either adds it to, let's say, a Slack channel saying, hey, there's a new notification that you have, or it can send it directly into your Gmail inbox using a Gmail node. So this is the exact same backend logic that a developer would have to come in and code into your website that performs the exact same action. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually upgrade that automation and because we are NAN developers, we know how to use generative automation, which means you introduce some kind of LLM step into the sequence. And let's say we get that same website contact information of the name, the email, and the message, and we might run it through an AI agent first. Once we run it through the AI agent, we might have a response generated or some kind of smart ticket categorization. We may then still go to the Slack thread and post it and let everyone from the business know, hey, there's a new contact from a customer, or we can even respond directly back to the customer using a Gmail node. So this is a very common use case for automation that every single website needs. And up until this point, it's largely been just developers that will have to go into the website and then code out some backend functionality. Now, just to frame for you, the difference between a traditional website developer that will go in and code this stuff up versus you who uses NAN is the fact that you know how to do generative automation. You're actually gonna be considering very sophisticated workflows. Yes, some of those might use an AI step to help with some reasoning or processing of something, but you might actually have complex multi-part workflows that will actually connect a bunch of different systems together in order to complete certain tasks. So the person that the business would typically hire is not really thinking about AI or different workflows. They're just thinking about how do I get this and then send it directly to the place that it needs to go. They're not trying to get creative with different use cases or functionality. Now, aside from the contact form, which again, every single website has, and this is a great opportunity for you to go into websites and say, hey, how can I help you automate some of your customer requests that are coming in through the web form? There are literally so many other opportunities for this website automation that you can capitalize on. The next is, okay, we're in that e-commerce store. Let's go across to products. And here we have a product page for premium wireless headphones. Unfortunately, they're out of stock. So what can you do over here? Well, it's very common for e-commerce stores to have this kind of feature where you can click this button and then enter your email address and you'll get notified when this item is back in stock. So once again, you can enter the email address. You'll have to press notify me. And then some developer in the back end will have to come into here find that specific functionality, code it up to then maybe add it to a Google Sheet or to Slack or to do whatever else with it. Now, what you could do as an NAN developer is to still run that backend logic. So we can still use an NAN workflow for this and have it be very basic where you just get a webhook that connects into a Google Sheet node. But really what you can actually do is have a database of all the products and their current status if they're in stock or out of stock. So then when the customer sends the email address back into your NAN workflow, you can actually also package this bit of information and say premium wireless headphones, they're $199. And then maybe for your AI agent, you have a tool call that goes across to that database. It tries to find a similar product to these headphones for a similar price range that is in stock. And then maybe instead of just saying, cool, we'll let you know it's in stock, you have a text box over here that says, okay, we'll let you know when it's in stock. Or here is some other headphones that are actually 20 bucks cheaper. They're the exact same features, but they're in stock right now. Do you wanna click these and add them to your cart? So as you can see from this very simple use case, a developer will typically be like, cool, I'll add it into a database and then you manually have to come in here later on and you know email the customer. Or as an AI developer, you can now introduce these more sophisticated workflows to actually improve the customer experience. So that's another fantastic use case of how to do no code automation and actually set yourself apart from the typical old school developers who are not introducing AI into their workflows. 
And then a final example of no code automation is let's go across to this track my order page. So this is yet another common page for e-commerce stores. You enter your order number and your email address, then you hit track order. And actually for these ones, I've seen developers actually send a webhook that goes out to a totally different server. So something like Google Cloud or AWS Amazon Web Services, and they host a totally independent script of like 100 lines, and that script will then go into Shopify, find the order ID, and then respond back with the customer's delivery information. That process might cost a business two or 300 bucks, depending on what the hourly rate of the developer is and exactly how long it takes them to work with the API and create that logic. Or you could literally run this workflow in NAN to get the response back to the user. You have the packet of information that comes from the website that includes the order number and email address. Then you plug that order number and email address into this Shopify node in NAN. You find the order, you get the order details, so maybe the tracking information, and then you reply back to that website with the order details which then means on the front end, you can have a little text display box over here that says, hey, we found your order, it's gonna be delivered tomorrow, and here is your tracking number. Okay, so now let me show you the actual technical process of how to get this done. So this process that I'm gonna be doing for this track my order page is gonna be the exact same if I used it for the contact page or the products page, or absolutely any other website task automation that you wanna do using NAN. The core concept here is that somehow we need the website to communicate with our NAN workflow, and that communication, that piece in the middle is actually a combination of an API and a webhook. So if you're not familiar with what an API call or a webhook is, imagine you're calling one of your friends on your mobile phone. You as the person that wants to call your friend, you'll have to dial the person's number and then you actually call your friend. And then your friend on the other line will hear their phone ring, will pick it up and then you'll be able to actually communicate and have a chat. So then for the purpose of this example, the website is the friend that's placing the call, which is called an API call. And then NAN is the person that's receiving the call, which is called a webhook. So over in NAN, we need some way to actually establish a phone number that the website can call. And to do that, we're just gonna go across to the nodes button. Let's type in webhook. And now we have a custom URL that we can point the website to, and it's gonna be able to drop information directly into this workflow. So I've got two URLs over here, a test URL, which we're gonna be using right now for testing. And then if I click this button, it's gonna to go to production. And that basically changes this endpoint. And once we make this scenario live, it's gonna run 24 seven and be accessible by anything online. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out of here. And now on my canvas, I've got a way to actually receive the information from the website. And now back on a website, I actually have to figure out how to collect this information from the front end. And then I have to plug it into an API call and send it across to NAN. So to do that, you'd actually have to go into the website code. Now, a great place to start to figure out where the code could be, especially if there's like a lot of different files on a website, is go into the page.html. So for example, I've got the contact.html, which is just this contact page. Then I've got the index.html, which is the home page, product.html, which is one of the product pages. And then for this demo, I'm gonna be looking at the track-order.html, which is this track order page. So what you would do is just order the track order HTML page and you can plug this entire page across into ChatGPT and say, hey, you know, I wanna introduce a function where I'm collecting the order number and email address, and then I'm sending it across to an NAN workflow. Here is the webhook. But in this case, the website is a little bit more sophisticated because we've got the front end HTML page, and then somewhere in this code, we're actually pointing out to a script.js file, which is actually where all the JavaScript lives. And this is pretty common. You'll have a front end HTML page. You might have a separate .css page, which is just for styling. And then you might have a JavaScript file, which is just for the functionality of the website. So in this case, I'm still on the track order HTML page. And I found the section here, which is denoted and it says track order section. And I can read through here. And this is the actual HTML structure that is giving us this specific layout where it has an input box, an input box, and then a button over here. And then if I look through the code, I can see track your order, enter your order details below to track your shipment, which is exactly this stuff over here. I then have an input box for the order number, which is this bit over here then an input box for the email address, which is this bit over here. And then I've got a submit button over here, which is for this button over here. Okay, so my next step is to go across to the script.js. Let's open it up. So typically the code will always have this green commentary, which just explains to you which section or which function you're looking at. So what you do is just scroll down until we find, okay, order tracking functionality. So in our case, we have the functionality starts here. And if I scroll down, we have scroll to the order status, show success message, and thumbnail image functionality for product page. Okay, so it actually ends over here at line 72. So I'm just gonna hold shift, I'm gonna click at line 72, and now I'm taking this snippet of code, which includes the entire order tracking functionality. I'm copying it, and then I'm gonna paste it into Claude, 
and I'm asking Claude saying, hey, I need to edit this code. I need to grab the order ID and email address and then send it across to this endpoint. And this endpoint we're gonna grab in just a second. And then I say, please edit this code and return it in full. And then I just pasted in that code that I just copied. So the endpoint that we want is this endpoint over here. Let's double click it. I'm gonna click on the URL to copy it. And then let's paste it into here and let's hit enter. Okay, so Claude's returned the code to us. And a quick note is that it's actually gonna use a post method. So let's go back into our webhook and let's just change this to post. And now let's copy this code. And back in our website, let's remove this old code and paste in our new one. So I'm gonna take this backspace and paste in our new one. All right, and now let's test if the connection that we made is actually working. So I'm just gonna put a random order number in and my email address. And back in NAN, I'm just gonna open up this webhook so it can actually receive events from the website. And on the website, I'm just gonna click track my order. Okay, so this is actually a placeholder text. Uh, this was included in the original code when I created this website as a dummy website. So we'll be removing this. But back in NAN, we can actually see that the webhook received that information. So if I double click this, let's scroll down and zoom into here. So we can see that we received the order ID and an email address. So now we can actually build out the NAN flow to actually track this order. And for our specific use case, I'm not actually using a Shopify store. I'm just gonna emulate Shopify by using a basic Google Sheet where I've got an email address, an order number, and then a delivery date to return. So let's build this out. Let's find a Google Sheet. We're gonna use the get rows function. All right, so I've got my document, which is NAN workflow, and then the sheet in that document, which is order tracking. And now I actually wanna create a filter that's gonna be able to filter out by order ID and email address. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm gonna go column, email address, and then the value has to be the value that's received from this webhook. We wanna filter that's gonna be order number, and then it's the order number from that webhook as well. So my placeholder data is actually bar at support launchpad and my order ID is 12345. Now, since my order ID here is B12345, I actually am not gonna be able to return this order information. Let's just confirm that by executing this step. Awesome, and no data was returned. So let's actually go back here and fix that. So we have B12345 and my email address. Let's reopen this webhook, send that new data in. So track order. We could the execution run and I think it actually automatically found that order that we needed. There we go. So email address, order number, and then the delivery date, 29th of June, 2025. So then my next step here is actually gonna be to respond to that API call. So respond directly to the website with the tracking information. So now I'm gonna be using a respond to webhook node and I'm gonna send the JSON payload and that is gonna be a response key. And the value of the response is just gonna be the delivery date value. Awesome. So now the actual response that's gonna be coming back to the website is gonna say response and then 29th of June, 2025. Okay, and now our final step is that since we're using a respond to webhook node over here, we've gotta go into this first webhook. Let's double click it open. And now we have to change this value, which is respond immediately to respond using webhook node. Awesome, let's save this. And now let's open up the workflow so it's ready to receive events. So I'm just gonna copy this now and I'm gonna go back into Claude and just say, when the website sends the API call across to NAN, and they will actually send a response back to that API call that looks exactly like this. And this is what I just copied from that respond to webhook node. So we need to actually parse the response. So parse this reply from NAN and display the text directly to the user. And by the way, please remove all the other placeholder stuff that was there before. So let's fire this off. All right, awesome. The code was changed. Let's copy this. All right, and now let's replace the old order tracking functionality, which starts here and it ends over here. So I'm just gonna backspace this and paste in the new one. Let's refresh our website. All right, and I've just re-added my order number and email address. Let's hit track order. And then awesome. So we have the order information response is 29th of June, 2025. And then back in NAN, we can see that it fired off successfully. And the webhook response is over here, which if we zoom in is 29th of June, 2025. So there you go. By using this simple API call and webhook method, you're actually able to run these sometimes simple, sometimes complex website task automations in NAN. If you're a business owner, you can actually just do this by yourself and replace the need for having to hire a developer to do this kind of stuff for you. Or if you're an NAN agency, you can now offer this as a service to your clients. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable. If you're watching right now, I would appreciate if you could like, drop a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and that'll help me boost this video to more people and grow my channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video. All right, enjoy your website task automation using NAN.